It's the GTN Show. Welcome. Now, in case you missed it, there was a huge amount of racing over in Mallorca this weekend as the battle is heating up for those PTO World Rankings that come to a close at the end of this year. There was also a couple of exciting running events that are kind of still going on, which we're excited to chat about. And those pros who weren't racing try, well, they didn't want to get left out. They've been doing a bit of cross-country racing. And James, I gather you've also got something up your sleeve. Well, yeah, I've also signed up for something. The Zwift Triathlon Academy kicks off this week. Uh, you can do it too, and I'm doing it. We're going to start by taking a look at a few things we've spotted on social media. And those pros who haven't been out racing have been dipping their toes in some cross-training style of racing. And it's this picture and a little video from Vicky Holland that we spotted where she's, I guess, gone out of her comfort zone slightly with a bit of cross um, bike racing, uh, cyclocross racing, I should say. And it looks great fun. She's dragged along Georgia Taylor Brown and um, Non Stanford. I haven't actually seen the results, but we can take a look at those guys negotiating those turns. Mm. Lots of smiling faces going on there. Looks like they had a lot of fun. Uh, a bit of a change of scenery from uh, the road racing triathlon that they used to. Also a change of scenery, Nikki Bartlett also doing a bit of cross country this time. Not with her bike in tow. She did a cross country league in the North Midlands Cross Country League and just six seconds off the win apparently. So pretty yeah. good running by her. I just think it's great just to see athletes kind of having a go at things that off season that you're still so hard so if it kind of works as training but mentally it's not training and i yeah. think it's so healthy um for yeah for, and also the skills you get especially for doing cyclocross um but also away from triathlon joe skipper has had a bit of fun with a duathlon now he admitted it's a small event and i think he wanted to have a bit of competition so he would have just gone away with a win which wouldn't be very exciting so instead he gave himself a 10 minute handicap yeah he's still uh Almost caught everybody. Two guys managed to hold them off apparently at the uh, Keith Stevens Memorial Duathlon, just a small low-key event in memorial of Keith Stevens. And it looked like a lot of fun. Uh, Joe, obviously, giving the locals a bit of a chance. There. I wonder if he'll change the handicap next year though, just so he wins. Oh no, you just have to go a bit faster. <laughs> Well, on to your try news, and everyone is talking about the showdown in Sacramento. A brand new race, Ironman California, happening this weekend, and it is the best 70.3 athlete in the world at the moment, Gustav Eden, doing his Ironman debut against the best Ironman athlete in the world, undisputed, pretty much, uh, Jan Fredino. So, with Gustav Eden recently knocking Jan off the PTO's top ranking spot for the world number one, it's essentially also a race for the world number one spot at the end of the year. Excited yet? Well, it turns out that Lionel Sanders was excited and it sounded like he was excited to watch it. When he recently came a distant second to Joe Skipper, he was quoted here as saying, I feel like there's no need for me to go to Ironman California because I'm not competitive right now. Well, apparently he changed his mind because last week in the form of a uh, exciting video, he announced on his channel on YouTube that he is gonna race. Basically, it was 4 minutes 43 of uh, slow motion shots set to music of uh, Lionel racing through the year. So if you want to go watch that, you can. But it ended with the word Encore on the screen and the Iron Man California logo with Lionel standing in between Gustav and Jan. So is Lionel going to be mixing it up between Gustav and Jan? Well, he definitely wants a bit of the mix of the media beforehand, doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, whether he's actually going to be in the mix when the race happens to sort of you know, put in context what I'm talking about here. He's already done, this will be his fifth Ironman. So he's done Ironman Coeur the Tri Battle Royale against Jan, obviously Ironman Copenhagen and Ironman Chattanooga, as well as the Collins Cup thrown in there. And there's also gonna be a few other big names that could potentially sort of push Lionel further down. We've got Justin Metzler, Rasmus Svensson to name but a few. So yeah, I think he might have his work cut out. Yeah, but the storyline really is Jan versus Gustav and maybe Lionel's gonna throw a spanner in those works. We don't know, but it's going to be perhaps the best Iron Man of the year because there's been no Kona. So let's hope so. Let's hope it's exciting. Uh, the showdown in California. Yeah. The Golden State Grapple. The uh, clash in California. I don't know. Call it whatever you want to. It's going to be exciting. We're going to be watching it. Well, some more try news and some good news this time. Last week we spoke about uh, Ch Challenge Budva and Magnus Didlev getting disqualified after the fact for apparently cutting the course. Well, a few people were not happy about that because it wasn't his fault and he made up the time on the run anyway. Uh, 
Challenge have reversed their decision and undisqualified Magnus Detlev now, so he has been reinstated as the winner. So yeah, a few of the pros did say at the time that they were not very happy with that decision, they didn't feel it was fair. So. We're pleased to see that. Yeah, I think it's an all a good news story because there were rumours that actually some of the pros, you know, it was so obvious that Magnus should have won. They were going to share their prize money and give him what he should have got, which is which is really great. I mean, now luckily they don't have to do that, so it's all nice and clear cut. But also, kind of hats off to Challenge for putting their hands up and saying we made that mistake, and you're know, not just kind of brushing it under the carpet. And they've even gone on to say in a, in a statement afterwards that they're going to put um, commitment into having more robust procedures in place to ensure that this isn't repeated. The Zwift Triathlon Academy is back for a third year and this is their biggest and most inclusive year yet. They're going to have some new events and different types of workouts. It's going to include a total of 10 workouts as well as two benchmarking rides and benchmarking runs, which is going to include a baseline for the run and the bike, which you have to do at the start, and then a finish line run and bike. And in order to complete the whole program, you may have to make sure you do both of these as well as those sessions in between. That's right, and you can choose this time short or long. So if you do the long one, you're going to start with a 40k time trial and a 10k run on the for the, for your baseline uh, and end with the same thing. And if you choose the shorter one, you're going to do a 20k time trial on the bike and a 5k run. And then similarly with the actual sessions themselves, you can the shorter ones will be 25 to 35 minute sessions on the bike and run and the longer ones will be 40 to 60 minute sessions on on each one. So if you choose to sign up for the whole thing, you can choose to either sign up for all the short ones or all the long ones. Yeah, there is a catch though, because I got excited. It's like, great, 25, 30 minutes run, that's about as much as I can manage on a treadmill, and I do want to have a go. But if you want to actually be considered for the Tri Academy, I'm afraid you've got to do the long ones. But there's some good news, you've got plenty of time to do it. It's actually just launched a couple of days ago on October the 18th, and it's now open for you to get doing those baseline events to start you off. That's right, and big news, go I'm gonna be doing it the whole thing, starting on Monday with my baseline 40 kilometer time trial, which I am very nervous about. And then the next day, our 10K time trial run on the treadmill, also pretty nervous about. Uh, but Mark's gonna be doing some of them with me. And yeah, you might be asking, why is James a pro who only retired a few months ago doing the Zwift Triathlon Academy? Surely he doesn't need this. But you couldn't be more wrong. I have done very little in the last seven months since I retired and I need all the motivation I can get to uh, basically get the turbo out of its box and uh, dust off that treadmill uh, and get some workouts in because I'm getting less and less fit by the I reckon day. it's just your excuse to not have to do any outdoor riding or running during winter. That too, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not looking forward to the winter and this is a good excuse to get my whole setup sorted out. So you can follow me along, you can join me in some of those sessions. We'll be putting it out on social media uh, when I'm gonna be doing the specific sessions throughout the program. The whole program has to wrap up by the 13th of December, after which, if you completed all of them, you go into the running to be part of that Zwift Triathlon Academy team for next year. Uh, they'll be sending out invitations to the top 150 to 200 people who perform in this Zwift Triathlon Academy uh, for next year's team. We've got a nice news story here from the Manchester Marathon. and. Around the 18 mile marker is where things can really start to go a bit wrong, can't they? Well, this was a situation for a guide runner for the athlete, Hasib Ahmed. He was 18 miles into his marathon and his guide started to develop blisters. Then he got dehydrated, got cramp and ended up collapsing. And he was left unable to finish the race. So he checked obviously that his guide was okay. And after 10 minutes, he realized he was okay, but he wasn't gonna be able to finish. And it was then at this point, he walked back to the course and was like, I wanna carry on, but you know, can't because I need a guide. And there was another athlete running past saying, go on, you can do it, you know, like people do in a marathon. And he turned around, he's like, well, I can't because <laughs> I can't see where I'm going. I need to have a guide. And it was actually a gentleman called Mr. Whitehouse who said, um, well, they got chatting and he said, after saying, you know, cheering him on, um, he didn't even hesitate to say, well, I can give you a hand. And it was just a really lovely story. And they both crossed the line and I think helped each other and have become friends as a result of that. And I just think it's a really great kind of story that comes from yeah, sport in those hard story. times. Man. Amazing, that's, that's really cool. Well, on to some more crazy running stories. Uh, Big Dogs Ultra, Backyard Ultra, Big's Backyard Ultra is happening right now as we record. In fact, it might still be happening as the show goes on. Uh, <laughs> that would be impressive know. if it is. It's already pretty impressive. Basically what it is, is 35 runners who are running loops. So they run a 4.1 mile loop or a 6.5K loop, and you have to start that loop every hour on the hour. And it is a last man standing event. So basically 35 runners started, they keep running laps through the day and the night endlessly until everyone's out and you get one winner. At this point, 
There are 28 DNFs and seven people still winning, basically. Uh, so they are on lap 52, so they've been going for 52 hours straight. Mm -hmm. An average lap takes them between 40 and 48, maybe 52 minutes. Uh, so they get between eight and 12, 13 minutes rest, and then they start again. And they've been doing that for well over two days. I mean, just think now. of what you have done, what I've done the last two days, and then imagine that all you did in that time was run. It is unbelievable. There's no time for sleep or a nap or anything. If you're lucky, oh. you've got 10 minutes to change your socks and put another pair on, uh, and they're in day and night. And like I said, there are seven guys still in it at the moment. Uh, we're not sure how long they're gonna go for. Maybe now uh, they've stopped running by the time you guys are watching yeah, this. Yeah, I mean, they started to fall fairly quickly in the last sort of 12 hours, haven't they? I that think it a, could be reaching that end point, but that is my goodness. an extreme, extreme run. Maybe we should do that with like a sprint triathlon and just keep doing it endlessly. You kind of did that. Well, I kind of did, but I definitely went to bed that night and <laughs> also had a glass of wine and slept in a you know, nice not hotel. Through, not through so, the no. Yeah, that's, that's another level, <laughs> Crazy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, mad stuff. Well, maybe next week we'll know the results of that. Our final piece of Try News is celebrating Black History Month, which has been going on for the whole of October. And we you know obviously there's not enough diversity in triathlon and hopefully that's starting to change very slowly. But recently, I was lucky enough to go and do a video with Alice Deering, who was the first black British athlete to represent Team GB in swimming at the recent Olympics. And she's also the co-founder of the Black Swimming Association. And she talks a little bit about that here. All right, Alice, well, whilst we've got you here today, I know you've just come back off Tokyo and you're super busy, but whilst also studying, you've been a co-founder of the Black Swimming Association. Can you tell me a little bit more like what your role is with that and what you guys are trying to do for swimming? Yeah, so yeah, I'm co-founder of Black Swim Association. I am the lead ambassador as well. So wherever I can, I'm going to sh shout, I'm going to speak about the Black Swim Association just like I am now. It's amazing. Thank you. And um, yeah, honestly, we're just looking to make swimming accessible to everybody. And um, we are starting with black people at the moment. We are four black people who have co-founded it. And we all kind of got together because we were fed up of hearing and seeing all these horrible stories and, you know, these horrible stereotypes, which, um, people have perpetuated both onto black people but also onto themselves about um, you know black people can't swim our bones are too dense we can't flow we're better at athletics or football or, or whatever and um, you know it's ended up with a lot of black people not being able to swim or not going swimming regularly and then as a result not many black people getting through to you know the Olympic stages and um, you know, myself, I was the first black woman to swim for Britain at the Olympic Games, which is incredible. But then also at the same time, it's kind of sad because um, it's a shame it's had to happen this late. So, um, you know, I'm so happy it's happened. Don't get me wrong, like it's incredible. But um, I just want to make sure that nobody else kind of has to go through these, like these bits of racism that I have um, gone through myself in swimming. It's never put me off the sport in any way. I want to stress that. I'm so happy in swimming and I absolutely love it. But um, it might not be the same story for everybody if they face racism in it. So um, we're looking to, you know, dispel these myths, break down these barriers and work with aquatic bodies and be the bridge between the black community and aquatic bodies to make sure black people are being represented both at grassroots, but also the boardroom level. So um, yeah, it's super exciting. And we're working with some amazing partners. You know, we've got the RLNI, Swim England, the STA, Speedo, we've got some amazing people who really want to work with us and want to see a positive change happen. And from the black people you know who are maybe not yet swimming, what to, what to them is their barrier? What do they see as their barrier? Yes, yeah, so it's really interesting. You know, when I, I when you tell I say to someone, oh, I'm a swimmer, and they're like, uh, well, and, and they might, they're black, and they'll I've had people just go back to me, oh, oh, I don't swim, my bones are too dense, or I don't swim, I can't float. I'm just it's just it's just so interesting to hear, and I just listen to them and just be like, um, I don't really know where this myth came from, to be honest. I think it came from a, an article back in like the 1950s from an academic journal where someone decided that, you know, black people can't swim. And then, you know, it's kind of like an urban legend that's just gone through and it's affected generations and generations of black people. And um, even to the point of like swimming lessons where swim teachers have been told to direct black people away from swimming into athletics and other sports because that's just what was thought was right at the time. And so, yeah, we've ended up at this situation where, I mean, someone's grandparents might not have learned to swim, their children never were taken swimming and they might not take their children swimming because it's not viewed as a priority. And I suppose it's just letting people know that it is a super important life skill. It's, prob it's probably the only sport that will ever save your life. Um, you know, if you ever, hopefully, God forbid, if anyone ever fell into water and didn't know how to swim, 
that that's it's terrifying. It's, it's an incredibly frightening thing. So um, just want to advocate for the need to learn to swim as a life skill. But then also the fact that it's really fun. It's a really great thing to be a part of. You know, it's given me loads of amazing opportunities and can open so many doors. And not looking at swimming as a broader perspective than just being able to swim. So, you know, you can go row a boat, you can go surf, you can go um, paddle boarding, you know, it opens up water sports for you essentially and, you know, potential jobs, potential careers. And, um, you know, it's about giving people more opportunities for their life. So that's kind of, it's how I've kind of had to view swimming in the past few years. I never used to view it like that. It used to be very much, this is a sport, this is a career, this is my life. Whereas for some people it's completely opposite. And I've really enjoyed having my perspective changed in that sense. So, um, you know, I've learned and grown a lot from just helping co-found the Black Swim Association and we're really hoping to pass on that knowledge and that worldview to the people. Some tech news now and Sela San Marco have released a new saddle, the Shortfoot 2.0. It comes in four different variants. So uh, there's uh, manganese saddle rails, steel saddle rails, aluminum saddle rails and then the top of the range carbon. Uh, there's also three different levels of comfort. So there's the normal one, then there's the comfort range and finally the super comfort option available. So if you're looking for a new saddle, now might be the time to try out some Seller San Marco. Well, it's on to race news and all of the main action was happening over in Mallorca. We had Ironman Mallorca back after a bit of a hiatus for the pros and it was some exciting racing. The field, I think, built up as the last few days were going on and the women's race had one of the race favourites coming out first and second. It was Fenella Langridge and Lisa Norden who swam together. But then Lisa Norden, being such a pro on the bike, opened up that lead and had a four minute lead coming into T2. However, she didn't actually have the fastest bike split. That was Ruth Arstel, who ended up overtaking Lisa and a few others actually overtook Lisa on the run. And Ruth Arstel got snuck in under nine hours to take her first win as a pro in the Ironman with a time of 8.59.15. And yeah, the fastest bike split and I think the third fastest run of the day. Second place went to Justin Matteo of France. Third was Kristen Leopold. And Lisa Norden ended up having a sprint finish, having been with that four minute lead. She ended up coming fourth, just four seconds behind third. Painful Ouch. finish at the end yeah. of an Ironman. Ouch. <laughs> On the men's side, also a first time Ironman winner in uh, Leon Chevalier, who recently won Ember Man, he had an amazing race. He stayed with Cam Worth on the bike uh, when Cam Worth came past and all the way to T2. He ended up running out of T2 with a 12 second advantage, uh, but the race wasn't over then. Uh, he put time into Cam Worth throughout the run, but behind him, Florian Angert was uh, reeling him in and he got within 30 seconds of him at one point, but Leon held on for the win at the end with Florian Angert coming in second less than a minute behind him and Cam Worth holding on for third there. Well, elsewhere on the island of Mallorca, Challenge had another half distance race, Challenge Paguera Mallorca, and that had some pretty high profile athletes as well. In the women's field, it was another impressive start from Lucy Hawes, her third 70.3 in three weeks and she led the swim out by a minute and then she very much held her own and increased that lead on the bike. So she actually set off on the run with a two minute lead. However, she had the likes of Nicola Spierig and Imogen Simmons chasing her, which yeah, no one wants to be glancing over the shoulder to see Nicola Spierig who ended up running a one hour, 20 minute half marathon to take the win. Imogen Simmons with a 121 also overtook Lucy to finish second. But then Lucy managed to get on the podium for the third week in a row, which is pretty impressive with that 124 and Indy Lee of Great Britain finished just outside in fourth. On the men's side, Frederick Funk was looking to do better than his Challenge Salute performance a couple weeks ago, uh, and he did what he normally does. He put some time into everyone on the bike, only uh, Nils Fromont able to stay with him. He had three minutes on the chasers in T2, he soon dropped Nils Fromont, uh, and it was just him running away for the, for the run, but the other guys were breathing him down and they got within 39 seconds of him. Colin Chartier uh, was just behind him and Magnus Ditlev in third, 77 seconds separating those top three. Uh, but your podium there, uh, all well deserved. All right, it's about time to take a look at your photos. But first up, we want to revisit the Super League Triathlon diving competition where we ask you guys to vote for your best dive or your favorite dive. And I think it's fair to say, hands down or hands by the side, it was Jess Learmont. <laughs> Do you like what I did there? 
Yeah, very clever. Yeah, Penguin. Mm, I get it. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> On with the stuff you guys sent us. Remember, you can upload your stuff using our uploader. Uh, Tij sent this uh, from the Netherlands. Enjoying the end of the summer, beginning of the autumn with a nice rural view in an otherwise urban environment. Quite a view there. It's golden hour, isn't it? We love golden hour here at GTN. Um, this one, though, is a little more on the sunny side. Sent in from Nick. Um, and it says, Obey or do? He says, It's a custom team carling paint job. Is that carling us in the beer? No, it's spelt differently, isn't it? Mm. <laughs> um, TLR race wheels and Q rings. He's out on the Sunshine Coast in Australia. No wonder that it's nice weather then, as they're heading into summer, aren't they? Mm -hmm. But there's a bit of a question here. So he said it's his first race on the new bike, um, walked away with the PB in overall time, brilliant stuff, but he needs a name for the bike. And he's suggesting Phantom? Oh, um, I think that's a Incredible Hulk bike, isn't it? With those colors, uh, purple and green. Isn't that Incredible Hulk colors? Maybe. Well, maybe you guys can help him out and leave some suggestions in the comment section below. Too. Yeah. Also, we have this from Harrison, his Cervelo P2 in Fort Worth, Texas, making my pain cave cozy for winter indoor training. That does look like quite a pain cave and uh, use wetsuit there to uh, tease him that he uh, won't be swimming for a little while maybe outdoors anyway. Uh, yeah, he's got a pretty good setup there, doesn't he? Yeah, definitely. Well, I expect quite a few of you guys might be starting to set up your pain cave, so make sure you share them with us. Or for those of you who are luckily heading into summer down in the Southern Hemisphere, do make us jealous with some lovely outdoor pictures as well. And like you said, we said, you can do that using the uploader on screen. On to our caption competition, and last week we had this photo of a man trying to get away from the wave, uh, and he, uh, well, he looks like he was not having a lot of fun in that water. So your captions were, Banana P said, man makes waves in his debut triathlon event. And then we've got Beck Mango with, I'm glad we aren't doing a wave start this race. <laughs> and then Lord Bertos said, a new PB, wave goodbye to that. Well, our winner this week, though, comes from Royce Muller. Not even a COVID vaccine will help this guy get through the first wave. I like the play on words there, clever. clever. I mean, we tend to not really go back to COVID too often, Ooh. but that one's worth it. So well done. Do get in touch and we will get a GTN cap sent out to you. But for your chance this week, James, you've chosen this picture, haven't you? Uh, yeah, from uh, Ironman Mallorca. And I'm not sure what these guys were doing in the dark, in the water. Um, uh, suggested maybe, why did you start the race with your car keys in your pocket anyway? Well, James is getting quite good at these caption comps, but I still reckon you guys can go one better, so make sure you do leave your suggestions in the comments section below. And that's then bringing us to a close of this week's show, but there's still plenty coming up this week. We've got GTN's Great British Adventure, where you and Mark head off for a little bit of a tour. Well, Mark's taking you on a tour, isn't he? He took me a tour of London, yeah. It was a uh... What the adventure. Yeah, we've also got how to run 10K without stopping. And you might have started to see some of it in the shop now or in our videos, because we've got some brand new cycling kit. It's pretty awesome, lovely colors. So I would suggest going to check it out in the GTN shop now. Yep, that's available now. If you're looking for something to watch right now, Mark and I did a cheap suit versus super suit video. And there's also a new coaches corner where we answer all your questions. So don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next week.